What's up, duties and dudettes? We have some very important things to get into in this daily rundown, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I don't have socks on. That's true, I don't have socks on. It's just not the important thing. The important thing is the fact that the economy slash stock market is starting to show some very serious signs of cracking. So I wanna get into that, and I hope Fingers crossed you are watching this video in enough time because by the time the market opens tomorrow, we're going to have another inflation report and that might be the thing that causes it to officially crack or it might just kick the can down the road. So I want to give you some stats, facts, and figures, and most importantly, proof of how these things have played out in the past so you have a better idea of how things are coming in the future. And don't forget, if you enjoy these type of daily updates, obviously smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. With that being said, let's rock. By the time the casino closed today, not only was your boy, me, the luckiest trader on this side of the Mississippi, a couple hundred dollars richer, but the Dow closes a little change on Tuesday as Wall Street braces for a key U.S. inflation report. If you traded today, if you're an active, degenerate trader like myself, there's a good chance you were bored to tears. There was movement down at first, then we did nothing for hours, and then we bounced at the end of the day. So even though on the daily chart, it looks like there was good movement throughout the entire day, as an active trader watching this, I bet you in the same boat as me of feeling like we were watching paint dry. With that being said, I can't say I had a good trade, but I had a lucky trade and I wanna break it down for you because it had some advanced options techniques in there that I thought I could share, be a little bit more didactic to throw in an SAT word. But anyway, daily DGEN report. Today, I locked in about $600, which would pay for an entire year of the Goonie Discord. If you wanna trade with me, other phenomenal traders, private lectures on the weekend, newsletters, the first month is completely free. Link in the description below, use the code Goonie and your first month is free. It'll cost you zero zilch goose egg. Anyway, as you can see here, April 9th, or uh, just past 10 a.m., Piper, my trading system, and also the cat that I live with, fired off a bearish signal. Three out of five confidence on the SPY and the Qs suggested a call credit spread. Obviously, the details got posted a little bit later. This trade fully hit uh, for the minimum sizing of $176, as in that's what it would have required to take both of those. You could have made $24, and then from there, you could scale it up as you see fit. And then I broke down my own trade. I ended up taking a put credit spread on SPX, the actual S&P 500 index. And you might be thinking to yourself, why did you do a put credit spread as in betting on the over when that system that you dedicated years and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of your life to creating told you to have a call credit spread as in betting on the under? That That's a good question. Um, it's because I'm a degenerate. I'm not disciplined. I trade on tilt. Who knows? I wasn't given enough attention as a child. I don't know what it is, folks. If I knew the answer to that, I I would be a multi-millionaire trader. I wouldn't I wouldn't be screaming at myself in the mirror at night or crying in the shower. Anyway, I digress. Let me explain this trade and how I got lucky, but just to kind of show you, um, well, it's, it's actually a little bit more complicated, but anyway, here it is. On the SPY, here's a look at the action on the day. We vomited, we did nothing, then we popped. Like I said, my actual trade was on SPX. So the market opened here, this white vertical line, 930, and then I'm gonna draw your attention to these two horizontal lines. When the market opened up here, for whatever reason, as I alluded to, I decided to go against my own system. So I got in a put credit spread. For those of you who don't know about it, and if you want to learn more, that's why you should join the Discord. We have a lot of lecture videos and we discuss it literally on a daily basis. But anyway, it's an over bet. So I sold 5,190. When you sell the more expensive one, i.e. the credit spread, you're betting on it ending the day above. And it ended up hitting, but there's quite a bit of a day where it would have looked rough. Anyway, for protection, you have to buy a protective leg. So you sell one put and you simultaneously buy another put. It's a credit spread because when you're selling is more expensive, i.e. it's a net credit for you and you get all of your profit if you end the day above it. Now, obviously, even though we ended the day above it, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I was sitting here around 10.30, 10.40, watched the stream in the morning and I was freaking out, didn't know how to handle it. And I saw my position getting absolutely annihilated. Now, generally when this happens, another advanced technique is when my short leg right here around 10.30 is being tested, I like to protect myself by throwing on an iron fly. 
It's the classic technique. You should look it up if you don't know about it, but it really mitigates your losses and there's a small chance you end up with money at the end of the day. Well, unfortunately, this vomited so quickly, I didn't have time to do that. I missed my opportunity to hedge, so I do what I do best. And I went full tilt. I went full DJ. This short leg, as in I sold it, I bought it back. Generally, when you have a credit spread, you just buy the whole thing back. I only bought one of the legs back, which means my leftover position was just normal long puts. I was riding puts and I thought, let's go. Now, fortunately, the market violently kept puking just in enough time for, I had 10, I got out of seven at break even, and then the other three I rode to a little bit of profit, and that was 200 each, hence how I made the 600 on the day. Is this good trading? No. Is it disciplined trading? No. Am I still the luckiest, best trader on this side of the Mississippi? Without a freaking doubt. Uh, and that's all she wrote on the day. Those were my own trades. I'm not necessarily happy about them, but hey, a green day is a green day. Now let's talk about how the market is maybe potentially about to go really, really red. I don't know how hardcore of a sign this is, but it seems like a pretty hardcore sign. Costco selling as much as 200 million in gold bars monthly. Wow. When the world is turning to Costco to go to their financial flight of safety, that's not good. 200 million in gold bars monthly people that's how afraid people are to be in the, in the dollar and the stock market this is a clear flight to safety and costco is keeping the world alive with their gold bars and their hot dogs that can't be a good sign something's cracking there and then more on a directly measurable note hedge funds are selling stocks at the fastest pace in three months and stepping up their short bets before, when I was saying there's some cracks in the foundation, I wasn't joshing you. Hedge funds are dumping stocks at the fastest pace in three months as what's often called, quote unquote, the smart money stepped up bearish wagers against equities amid the recent pullback. The professional sold global stocks on a net basis for a second straight week last week, driven almost entirely by short sales. It marked the biggest selling week for hedge funds since mid-January. So remember, you can buy, hope it goes up and sell, or you could create a position by doing the opposite. Sell, hope it drops, and then buy it back, and you could profit that difference. That's going short, that's being a bear. Separately, Bank of America's client data showed a similar trend. Its hedge fund clients sold stocks for a fifth consecutive week last week, exiting shares across small, mid, and large cap companies. Folks, those are all the caps, all of them. When you say small, mid, and large, th those are the three that we care about, and they're all being sold, but the fun did not stop there. Valuations are so stretched right now that anything less than perfection from economic data or any geopolitical noise can create substantial and quick sell-offs. Well, at least we don't live in tense geopolitical times right? At least everything's calm in the world. Anyway, we think June is no longer a given for the Fed to start cutting rates, but see rate cuts coming as inflation falls. So at the start of this year, the market, the big players were thinking, hey, we're getting six rate cuts. And then inflation didn't come down. And the Fed, led by Jerome Powell, said, no, you're not getting that many. Chill out there, bucko. And they're like, five? And Powell said, mm-mm. Said, four? Mm-mm. Three? Powell said, mm-mm. And the market's like, oh, oh, it's gonna be three. Powell's like, I didn't say that. I'm saying, wait for the inflation data to come in and we need to see inflation dropping. And they're like, no, 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 no. We heard us to ourselves say three, so we think it's three. And unfortunately, inflation is not coming down which means that the chances of these rate cuts not dropping. We're currently at 5.25%, 5.25%, 97% chance we stay there at the late April, early May June. When you go to the June meeting, now there's a 56% chance of a drop. Earlier, it was in the 70s. Granted, by the time you get to July, there are an increase odds, about a 73, 74% chance that we have some form of a rate cut, but it's just more of, we went from half, thinking we're going to have six this year, then inflation's not coming down. And now the can just keeps getting kicked down the road over and over and over again. And the can is taking a little bit of breather for tomorrow. Wednesday, April 10th, we get the CPI report. These three little letters that you probably thought had nothing to do with your life 
have so much to do with your life. The Consumer Price Index. This is, for whatever reason, the media's favorite measure of inflation. If you listen to the Fed, they like the PC one more, the personal consumption expenditure. But what you need to know is they're pretty similar. Like they're not exactly the same thing, but they're they're close enough. Anyway, this comes out an hour before the market opens tomorrow. And I got really bored today because don't forget, remember the market wasn't really doing anything. So I went back and I looked at the last 10 and I figured, you know what? Just to say thank you to all of my viewers, I'm gonna do a little bit of a nerdy statistical deep dive. And that's exactly what I did. And I found something out for you. If you wanna know how you should play this day, if you wanna know if you should be bullish or bearish, the answer is don't. Out of the last 10, five of these days were green, Five of these days were red. 50-50, go to a casino and play the roulette wheel. Play a little bit of blackjack. Do something else. At least you could get better odds than 50-50 somewhere else in your life. So if you're thinking for tomorrow, should you be bullish or bearish? I don't know. The odds say 50-50. That's what they are. I can't change the odds now. But I did find something out for you. I don't want to leave you high and dry and think that you watch all this video for absolutely nothing beyond watching a middle-aged man losing his last tether to reality. I found something for you. Relative to today's close, SPY's trading at 519.32. Write that down. Remember that. Lock that into the old noggin. Relative to 519.32, out of the last 10 CPI days, the open relative to the previous close, that's why I'm saying 519.32, eight out of 10 have been gap ups. As in, I think there's an 80% shot that we open above 519.32. And out of those two times that didn't open higher, one of them was a pretty green day anyway. So really out of the last 10, there was only one scenario that we gapped down and it actually was a pretty bad red day. Other than that, we're either straight up getting gap ups and on the other time we didn't get a gap up, it was still a decently good day. So I hope you could use that. But I also want to let you know that there's other crazy stuff going down this week, not just the CPI. At 1 p.m., we get the 10 year note auction. On Thursday, we get another inflation report, the producer price index. And then later this week, right before the market opens on Friday, it is the start of a new earnings season. This time around, we're hearing from JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock and Citi. So it's these big financial players who are going to give us an idea of how they did in the last quarter, what's going on with the strength of their client, what do they see going on with bonds and yields and lending and all that good jazz. So we're going to get quite a few insights. Now I know what you're thinking. Man, I love this video. Oh, shucks. I forgot to hit the like button. I should do that now. Let me double check that I'm subscribed. I know that these thoughts are all going through your mind at this exact moment, but I know another thought is, man, I wish I had some sort of apparatus that once a week would give me all of this information in a consolidated manner and I would prefer to pay nothing for it. Well, boy, do I have a product for you. This must be your lucky day. Every single weekend to your email inbox, you can get my breakdown of the trading week, what to look forward to in the upcoming week with respect to macroeconomic events, with respect to earnings, and wait, there's more. I even give you the seasonal breakdown of every individual trading day of the upcoming week. So for example, Wednesday, April 10th, I know over the past 20 to 25 years, it loosely favors the bears. Nothing too special there. Thursday, a little bit more bullish, and then Friday, a little bit more bearish. But yeah, folks, this is all 100% free. You don't have to pay anything for it. MattCoors.Locals.com. It's in the description of the video. And Locals is also how you can get connected to the Discord if you want to trade with me. Anyway, best of luck for the remainder of the week because it's going to be a crazy one. And good luck getting your Costco gold bars and also your $1.50 hot dog because that feels like a great way to sign off the video. Anyway, that's what I have for you. I appreciate your time. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.